Hi everyone, welcome to episode 17 of the Everyday Designs video blog. I'm Deanne, I'm an Australian based crochet designer, knitter, hand dyed yarn enthusiast and this podcast is pretty much about all of the above. <laughs> it's Thursday, May 25th, so we're in the very last days of autumn here in Australia. Uh, I'm going to be a bit sad to see autumn leaving. Is that a pun? No pun intended there. <laughs> Oh, the last of the trees are changing. Most of them have already lost their leaves, so it's a little bit sad, but I love the change of seasons here, and we're well and truly into woolly wearing weather. I think I mentioned that last time. It was so nice to actually start wearing some of my shawls and things, so let's get started, shall we? <laughs> How have you all been? It's been a busy few weeks since I last recorded. Um... If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen that over the weekend, I attended a celebration of wool at the old bus depot markets here in Canberra. Uh, you've probably heard me mention the bus depot markets before. They're on every Sunday, held in an old bus depot. Uh, but this one is a yearly event um, with that yeah, features uh, yarn craft. And well, not just yarn craft, this one was wool. There is one in a few weeks or a month or so, I think, called... Um, Creative Fibre, uh, which is sort of similar, but yeah, this is the big yarn event local to Canberra each year, and uh, it was really, really fun, and this year was the first year it was a two-day event. It's always just been one prior to now, um, and there were uh, craft workshops and all sorts of things like that over the two days, so it was really, really fun. Uh, got to I actually saw a lot of new... Um, indie dyers that I had not heard of before so it was really nice to meet some some new dyers and see some old friends so I had a lot of fun there and may have bought a few things yeah I did come on it was fun so really enjoyed that so that was last weekend And yeah, the other busy stuff's just life in general. <laughs> We've got kids who do all sorts of things, so you know, life's busy. I'm sure it's busy for everybody, but yeah. I actually thought, um, as I was getting ready to film, I was thinking about it yesterday, and I thought, oh, I haven't done enough to show everybody uh, anything this week. And then I got it all together, and I have got a bit to show you, <laughs> so I've even surprised myself. Sadly, no FOs, though, this week. Have not finished anything completely uh, so yeah no FOs which is a little bit sad but I do have a few whips and a few stash enhancement items and uh, I had a bit of a happy mail day as well so you know it's a bit of everything happening here <laughs> so I'll start off by showing you um, a whip that was pretty much teeny tiny last time it's another one of my blur shawls so this is my monster blur <laughs> because it's so big. I actually wore this to Bus Depot Markets uh, last weekend and it was lovely and warm because it was a bit chilly, although the weather was perfect. You couldn't have asked for better weather here in Canberra this time of year. It was sunny, so not freezing, and there was no wind because that's what makes the big difference is the wind straight off the Snowy Mountains, which is that way. I've talked about that before. Why do I find the need? I'm sure I'm not the only one. I always find the need to talk about the weather at the beginning of a podcast. I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's a... I feel compelled to explain why I'm wearing a shawl today as opposed to short sleeves last time. I don't know. What is it about starting a conversation and we'll just chat about the weather? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, sorry if that bores you. Back to whips. This is my... much bigger this week third blur I think I only I think I only had the first color didn't I had I even introduced the second color I don't think so so this is quite literally a scrappy blur I am using up bits and pieces left over my stash that happened to coordinate they're not even all um, fingering weight I think I was talking last time about the Rowan felted tweed being it's listed on Ravelry as DK it's not as thick as the DKs 
I have in my stash and it's working up quite fine next to the fingering weight so anyway it gives it extra texture I'm, I'm gonna call it a design feature <laughs> but you can possibly see or maybe not because they are blending rather nicely but um, I have the color repeats are quite short on some of these colors because I had much less than the stated amount of yarn for each um, addition color addition so all I did was reduce the number of repeats of the solid section where you don't stripe the yarns together so this one I've got a full skein of so I could do a wider section but this dark section is actually two colors it transitions from or even three what is it no it's two darker ones blended they virtually I stopped one and started another almost immediately without doing a solid section between them at all. That's probably making no sense to you whatsoever. If you haven't got a copy of the pattern, I apologize. What I'm trying to explain is it's really, really, really easy to use this pattern to accommodate the amount of yarn that you have and use up, as I have, leftovers that coordinate. So super duper easy to um, I was going to say compromise, that's not the word, improvise. I'll get my brain working. Yeah, easy, easy, easy to improvise and use smaller amounts of yarn than stated on the pattern. Uh, I'm really enjoying that. I've got, I did have a black, it looked like a blacky grey with little bits of um, the lilac in it last time. I've even taken it out of this bag so I don't even have it to show you, but I started adding it to it and it just didn't look right. Um, so I changed it and I've started adding this colour instead, which is, it's a little plum yarn that I got quite a while ago. It was a one of a kind, um, they're not dying anymore sadly, but it's got little pops of blue. It's blowing out a little bit, but I think you can see there's little pops of blue and there's actually teeny tiny uh, flex like like speckles before speckles were in <laughs> I think that can happen with dyes I'm not a dye so forgive me any dyes that are watching this and going you have no idea what you're talking about but doesn't some can't the colors sometimes split and then they create flecks of color I don't know anyway it's got teeny tiny speckles in it too which I was quite quite pleased about because we all know speckles are so hot right now so I'm adding that to it and I may even I'm gonna add that one next because it's just a little bit left over and then maybe go back to the is that birch to the mad tosh that I started using no dust weaver that I started using at the very beginning depending on how big it is because I don't want to make this one a mammoth one so yeah I'm pretty happy about that a lot of people who have bought the pattern uh, I've got a few messages on Ravelry about the placement of the markers okay so see you can see I've just got the pieces of yarn as markers in there with this design it's not critical exactly where they are as long as they're fairly evenly spaced so you don't have a you know all the increases in you know an odd spot you want them evenly over the bottom curve as I'm holding it upside down you want them evenly over the bottom curve but you can see see these ones here you can see I started noticing that they were veering a little bit too much towards the center whereas these ones are fairly evenly spaced but you can even see that they're not exactly the same number of stitches between them I think it is because half double crochet that's UK uh, no it's not um, US terms or half trebles if you're UK or Aussie terms um, the little top of the stitch seems to sit off to the side I can't even think which side it seems to sit and I think sometimes you can think oh well that stitch is finished you know the markers on that side of the stitch when really it's actually on that side of the stitch that's probably not making any sense either but for whatever reason with I find with half double crochet stitches this can sometimes happen so I mess it up too and I corrected it it's easy to see on this side you see where I've decided to move it was coming right up here 
and I've gone you know what that's too close to the center I'm going to move that out and I shifted it and I shifted this one as well it's not critical in this design now I'm not saying that that's how it's always going to be in my designs or any designs but for this one don't worry okay shift them over you can even take all six of them out and reposition them further around the side edges if you want to um, it's no biggie as long as they are fairly evenly spaced across the curved section of the bottom edge of your shawl the working edge happy days it'll all be good okay um, like I said this pattern was designed to be relaxing just to enjoy the color play don't want you stressing about anything else all right <laughs> And of course, you know, because I haven't finished that one, what did I have to do? I had to start another one. <laughs> no. This one is made entirely from Bendigo Woolen Mills yarn. I'm making up some samples uh, using their yarns at the moment and wanted to make up a blur. So here is the beginning of my Bendigo one not showing up quite as nice as they are in reality but this is uh, a luxury four ply which is your fingering weight as is the dark bluey gray here this middle one is their sock yarn which has a really slow color change I don't have the ball for that color but here's another one Ooh, that's another colorway in the same yarn so it's nice slow very slow striping like if you were to do a pair of socks out of this you'd probably have a section about that big of each color it's not narrow stripes at all so it's perfect for larger garments like a shawl to do a bit of a sort of gradient thing that's a technical term isn't it so yeah and I've got um, another sock yarn which I'm going to follow the dark bluey grey. I think that's called Slate. That one. That's the Slate. And then uh, Deep, which I don't have to show you. So um, a deep colour. I think it's called Sangria, which is a really deep wine colour on the bottom. Anyway, you'll see that get bigger as we go. So. Yeah, pretty happy with how they're turning. I'm a little bit obsessed with this shawl pattern. Wow. Can I say that when it's my own design? <laughs> I mean, each time I come up with a design, I'm usually quite taken with the current one and I want to make it in all the colours. But this, but usually I, I get over that after two and then I'm done and I want to move on to something new. But this is my fourth. My fourth one. And I could quite happily start a few. I actually have, uh, in a bag just over there, uh, another color collection that I want to put together in another one it's crazy I'm obsessed. <laughs> I am really enjoying it it is so relaxing you don't yeah like I said you just don't have to worry and enjoy the color play so yeah they are oh no I have one more whip to show you in my creative garage bag from Vanessa I love this bag it's so fun like look at that and even the inside's fun So cool love this big bag now a while ago I did show you this well not this project I started this blanket as a gift for my friend who is actually having her baby today haven't heard word yet expecting a little girl um, so I'm a bit excited waiting for the news and I had a blanket planned and I even started it and I showed it to you and then I changed my mind on the colors <laughs> I only had about this much done so it was no biggie but we decided to change the colors when I say we Imogen went mum no I think you need to change it and so we picked these colors <laughs> and hmm, they're looking rather dull for some reason on the it's quite a vibrant purple maybe it's because of the white hmm. anyway so this is my Fiorella dreams pattern the poor little flowers. I remember last time I showed you, I did, I think I had one section of the flowers done and they were all looking a little scrunched up. They hadn't blossomed fully yet. <laughs> but yeah, the little flower design on each of these. So 
I'm about halfway now. So given that Bobby is arriving today, I am a little bit behind. <laughs> I know. It's that blur shawl, I tell you. It distracted me. Um, yeah, so I will get it done. Uh, and I think that'll be pretty. These, I should mention, this is made from um, Bendigo Woolen Mills 8x 100% cotton. Uh, in the, the white's the snow, the purple, which I'm so sad, it looks really dull on, on the video. I don't know why. Anyway, it's a gorgeous, it's almost an electric dark purple. Does that make it sound worse? I don't know. Anyway, it's a beautiful colour called Regal. Pretty sure it's Regal. And the pink is blush. I'm pretty sure. I'll put the de oh, I'm gonna, I was going to say I'll put the details up. I've decided I'm going to do something a little bit different this episode. I am going to, and I think it'll make it easier for both myself and you guys. Instead of, you know how I've always put at the bottom, you know, this is where you get it. This is the colorway. Instead of doing that, because that takes up loads of time, um, I think I'm going to put actual links in the notes section underneath the video on YouTube itself. So not on the actual video video, but underneath the video. <laughs> I don't know what section you call it, where all the details are about my channel and blah, blah, blah. Because then I can actually put, you know, www and you'll be able to click on it and go straight there, which I think will be easier for you guys as well. Instead of having to maybe copy down the website that I'm referring to. Anyway, I'll see how it goes. That is my plan. It also might help me because, like I said, it does take a lot of time adding that stuff to a video. And maybe if the editing side of things doesn't feel so monumental, I might actually be able to podcast a bit more frequently. So we'll give it a trial run this time and see how it goes. So I hope that makes it easy for you guys. And if you see anything you like, the, the links will be there to everything I talk about. And hopefully you can just click and go straight there. But I hope that works. So you should find the link to that yarn <laughs> below, <laughs> below, below. And um, yeah, check out the colors there. The Bendigo cotton is beautiful. It wears incredibly well. You can chuck it in the machine and machine wash it, although I have done that, but in a delicates bag, that's just me, I believe it can just get thrown in the wash, it holds up very well. Um, although I am noticing it's a lot harder on the elbows to, because I've done a lot of this just in the last couple of days, you know, because there's nothing like leaving something till the last minute. Um, <laughs> I work so well under pressure. Um, yeah, I, I used to make everything virtually in cotton when we lived in Queensland. And then since moving to Canberra, where it gets a lot colder, I got so excited I can make things in wool now. Going back to the cotton, I really notice it. Does that mean I'm getting old? <laughs> oh, that sounds so whiny and pathetic. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I really notice it because it's got no stretch. So anyway, I shall persevere <laughs> and finish that, that blanket for, for my friend. So... Yeah, that is it for whips. Everything else looks exactly the same. Oh, except the blankets I'm making for the girls' beds. I remember last time I said that one I'd made, I'd done extra rows on one of them. Well, not, not much has changed. I've just matched the extra rows on the other blanket. So they're both the same size. So I'm not going to bore you by showing you a blanket that looks just like what I showed you last time. So yeah, um, that's it for whips. So I guess I could show you a few things from the the I'm gonna see from a celebration of wool on the weekend. I won't show you it all because I don't want to just sit here. I mean I didn't get heaps. I was actually quite restrained, which is not like me. Actually, <laughs> I did go both days, so I had plenty of time to look around and chat to everyone, which was really really nice. And the first day Imogen came with me, and I came home with I'd only purchased one skein of yarn and Imogen was in the car she's like mom are you okay she's actually you know feeling my forehead <laughs> oh she said you're a bit warm <laughs> something could be wrong <laughs> so I did I bought a few more the second day but you know I was, I was quite restrained I think knowing that I'm going to Bendigo in I think it's like five or six weeks away oh yeah 
I'm really looking forward to Bendigo. So I didn't want to spend up too big. I was just happy to look around. But the skein of yarn that I did buy on the Saturday was from a new indie dyer. I had not heard of them before. And get this, they're like 20 minutes down the road from Queen Bean. So these guys call themselves guys. These ladies call themselves Three Mums Yarn. And I got this skein from them. Like, how cool is that? As soon as I saw it, it was like, oh my goodness. I have no idea what I'm going to make with it. <laughs> it just looked awesome. It's actually, it's blow. Oh, it's either blowing out if I hold it close, or it looks really dull back here. I don't know. I'm going to have to get the lighting sorted. But there's greens. Like, this colour here is a real fluoro chartreuse green anyway you get the idea and it's an 80 20 merino nylon sock yarn 370 meters and i love it it's so cool i was actually surprised it does go with quite a few things like it's got the real nice gray to temper it down and anyway pots of purple look at that purple in there it's a bit grungy kind of like it yeah so that's the one I purchased on the Saturday, and I'm so happy with it. It's really, really cool. But while I was at this stand, whoops, nearly fell off the lens. While I was at the stand, I also got, which is not yarn, but the most adorable stitch marker sets. Aren't they cute? They had a whole bunch of them. Oh, too much reflection. In little sets like this. So you get like coordinating. I love the mittens in that one. Sorry, I blew them off the screen. Aren't they cute? There's another set here. Mittens, snowflake, and a teapot. And Imogen wanted this set for her. She bought this one. Aren't they adorable? <laughs> so I got a bunch of those. So these are not all for me. You guys are going to get some. Whether or not it's for the blur cow coming up coming up it's happening now I may as well talk about it while I've got those <sighs> blur cow in my ad in my oh, blur cow in my Ravelry group uh, is running till the 30th of June so there's plenty of time yet to crochet your fade with me and everyone else there's a couple of finished objects in there already oh my goodness you guys are quick um, please please come and join in if if you'd like uh, here is the prize well one of the prizes you know me I usually chuck in a few extra things later I'm, I'm notoriously late in letting you know what the prizes are and then I try and tuck something new in but this is a kit I put together it's even got a little sheepy progress keeper there for you the pr that one's from um, Knitty by Nature shop on Etsy she has some awesome stitch markers and um, yeah so these are all by Australian diners, diners, <laughs> dyers. This is Waratah Fibres. Helen from Waratah Fibres, she uses about an hour that way. And this, these two are from Little Plum Yarn. They're the ones that, yeah, you can't get anymore. So does that make them exclusives? Can't buy anymore, one of a kind. Anyway, this one's quite cute. It's got lots of little blue speckles that you can't see in it. Anyway, you'll have to take my word for it. So there's 100 grams, so 400 meters of that color and 50 grams each, so 200 meters of these colors. Um, they, I thought they'd be nice because to go along with the whole blur thing, they coordinate nicely together. If you wanted to add a couple of colors uh, to this set to make it another blur, go for it. But they'd be just as good for anything else. So that's the prize. And I'm also gonna throw in a little hmm, what do you call these wristlets are these called wristlets the ones that you can sling over your arm this one's one of the ones my sister made oh it's looking all brown and boring I don't know what it is with the lighting it's a nice lime green <laughs> and uh, it's got purple and jade in there so anyway it's got pockets on the inside which I didn't even realize until I picked up to show you guys it's got little pockets on the inside so yeah, I thought that would make a nice a nice kit as a prize. So that's one. I might have some 
progress keepers like the ones I got from the three mums yarn as well so anyway I'll put the details in the Ravelry thread at some point <laughs> and eventually let you guys know what I'm doing but please come and join in uh, it's been really fun seeing the colors that people are thinking of putting together and then seeing them actually come together and how they work and yeah I've really really enjoyed it so far so heaps of time to join in if you haven't yet already uh, st swing by and say hi I'd love to see you there the other thing I got from the bus depot markets was actually a gift from Angela of One Tree Hill alpacas now I've talked about Angela's yarn before this is to make uh, a sample up for Angela so she um, was very kind to give me some but check this out are you ready? Look. Oh, this has got sparkles. Oh my goodness. Gold sparkles. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with sparkle at the moment too. Oh, things that glitter. Isn't that divine? Now this is undyed yarn. So there's no dye in it. There's the colour of the fleece. And yeah, gold sparkle. And you wouldn't believe it. I, I should have gotten some to show you. Angela had flit, uh some yarn there with blue sparkle in it like what blue sparkle it was crazy and it looked awesome <laughs> so she had a selection of undyed yarns there of varying colors so this was the lightest one and then there was a beautiful camel and then the darker brown and they had silver gold or blue sparkle amazing <laughs> it was so cool so this is it says it's four ply but I don't think that's four ply in the sense of how Australians view four ply as in fingering weight. I know it gets very confusing because four ply should mean that it has four plies to create the actual yarn. I don't know. Anyway, it is 280 meters for 100 grams. So that to me says it's like more of a sport weight. I don't know. I don't know where the ranges go. Anyway, it's a little bit more plump than sock weight. But, oh, it's so soft. And it has sparkle. <laughs> it's so gorgeous. And get this, okay, if that wasn't good enough, I was looking at the names of the colours. Angela's named all her colourways because she dyes ones as well. And... I noticed all the for the undyed ones this is in her um, premium range Let's see if I can see the premium range which is now I'm gonna totally mess this up so if Angela you're watching just block your ears for a second because I'm sure this is not how you pronounce this 85% <laughs> Huakaya that's the alpaca content that's what I'm trying to get out <coughs> excuse me 10% silk and 5% Angelina thread. But I noticed all the names of the colours were like actual names. <laughs> but this is Amelia. That's the colourway, right? That's because this fleece, the fleece that this was made from, came from Amelia the alpaca. <laughs> her premium range of yarns from her, is it flock of alpacas? Heard? I don't know what the collective noun for alpacas is. That's really bad. I have to look that up. Um, yeah, when she gets her fleeces processed, she gets them done per animal and names the yarn after the animal that it comes from. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So how cool is that? There you go. I thought it was cool anyway. That's probably a real yarn nerdy thing to get excited about. But I thought that was just awesome for her undyed selection so anyway it has sparkle <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> okay moving on I thought you guys would enjoy that I thought it was great so the other the only other thing look I'm getting all embarrassed sorry so the other thing I wanted to show you was something I got sent to me in the mail the other day the lovely Hannah from Rose Hip Knits podcast messaged me a couple of weeks ago said she wanted to send me something because I donated some pattern prizes 
uh, for her Aussie along, which I was happy to do so, and I certainly didn't expect anything in return. So I thought, oh, that's nice. You know, you don't have to, but you know, if you feel you must, <laughs> don't let me stop you. Oh my goodness. You should have, yeah, well, I was going to say, you should see what she sent me. Well, I'm about to show you. <laughs> oh my goodness. How gorgeous are these? These are her hand dyes. So here's her card. Rose Hip Island on Etsy. Now, I've not had the opportunity to use any of Hannah's yarn before, so I am super excited. But I'm not going to be greedy either. So one of these is going to be for a um, podcast prize at some point. So yeah, how cool is that? Aren't these gorgeous? So this one is called Purple Rain, appropriately. Isn't that beautiful? It's New her New Zealand sock base, 80% New Zealand merino, 20% nylon. 357 meters per 100 grams and this one is called lilacs on Oz sock which is 80% Australian merino 20% nylon 373 meters per 100 grams they are both gorgeous thank you so much Hannah I got the most adorable package it had um, some uh, dried apple crisps from because uh, Hannah is from Tasmania and Tasmania is known as the Apple Isle, just in case you didn't know that. And yeah, so a little package of that and some tea and a beautiful card and um, these babies. So Hannah, thank you so very much. That was beyond generous of you and I'm happy to share. So not sure which colour I'm going to keep though. <laughs> it's yet to be decided which one I'll um, send off in a prize. But I definitely will because... Um, I'd love for someone else to be able to try this as well. It's so beautiful. Don't you love the knitting, crochet, yarn community? I find people are so generous. So it's really nice. It's very, very nice to see and to be a part of that kind of community. So yeah, how nice are they? So that was a very happy mail day because <laughs> I completely forgot about it and went to the post office to actually to do something else and got the... Um, mail from the post box and there was a parcel. I was not expecting a parcel. Honestly, I thought she might send a card <laughs> or something. I certainly did not expect two full skeins of yarn, that's for sure. So that was a beautiful surprise. Thank you. So yeah, that's, that was my happy mail. Uh, the only other thing I was going to show you was um, my plan projects. Dream crochet plans I have haven't started yet because I keep starting a bazillion blurs. I, because my friend is having her little girl and actually we have another friend about to have a little girl as well. So two little girls um, arriving very shortly. I want to make a couple of little vests as well because, you know, I haven't finished the blanket for them. So of course, why not start something else? <laughs> so I'm going to make a couple of little scooter vests. The scooter is one of my designs. Uh, it's a little unisex vest uh, with buttons on the shoulder. It's very, very cute. Uh, well, I think so this afternoon. Um, anyway, it's quite a versatile pattern. It works really, really well with variegated yarn, which isn't always the case for crochet. So I'm going to make one out of this, which is the Waratah Fibres that is also in the uh, Blur prize pack. And I found these buttons in my stash to go with it on the shoulder. So one little girl's gonna get that one. And then the other one I'm going to make out of the Bendigo Woolen Mill sock. So this one will have a bit of a um, gradient stripe thing happening. And I've got some buttons I found some handmade buttons that'll go with that too. It's a really nice soft colour. So I thought that would be lovely for a new little girl as well. So hopefully I will have started, if not finished these, <laughs> by the next time I record. See, I'm a, what is it? 
I shouldn't say that I'm making myself accountable by showing you because you know that doesn't work. <laughs> I've shown you plenty of projects that I've started and <coughs> are still uh, languishing somewhere. But we won't talk about them. Anyway, <laughs> they're my plans, my dream projects, which sort of have a bit of a deadline. I'm, I'm hoping to do the three month size in the four ply. This pattern, this pattern, the scooter pattern, I have written and it, you can make it in fingering weight in baby sizes, uh, sport weight or eight ply for bigger kids. So it's pretty pretty good value. You can get it in an ebook on Ravelry. So you get the three, it's three separate PDFs for each yarn weight and you can get them as a pack ebook set. So you've got all of them if you wish. Or you can just buy the yarn weight that you're interested in. So there's my little plug for the scooter vest. Um, the other thing I'm hoping to make is a skirt for my daughter Imogen, who will not stop growing. Um, <laughs> and because the temperature has dropped now quite suddenly, like only a few weeks ago we were still in sleeveless tops and now we go out and it's only 9 degrees. Um, although that hasn't stopped my girls going outside in summer dresses. Crazy. Um, I want to make Imogen a winter skirt and... I don't know what it's like where you live, but here it is very hard to get stuff for girls of Imogen's age that is outside the category of denim and leggings. <laughs> it is really, really hard. I don't know what happens when they suddenly get to size uh, 10 to 12, because she's really tall. Um, all of a sudden, and old mini skirts, that's the other option, which, yeah. Anyway, I want to make her a good skirt and a long one, and it's got to be a warm one for the climate here. So, I'm going to make her something with this. I have had this in my stash for so long, it's embarrassing, almost. Um, you know what, I can't even remember what yarn it is. It's that long I've had this. Let's have a look. Da -da 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 -da. The big reveal. Oh, Mosaic Moon. This is 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. Oh my goodness, why haven't I used this before now? What is wrong with me? <laughs> okay, it's stock marked April 15, 2014. Three years ago, this was dyed. Actually, I think I got it on somebody's D stash. I think. See, I can't even remember where I got it. So it's um, double knit, DK. It's still a double knit. And this is um, the semi-solid that goes with it. So I'm going to make Imogen a Collide skirt, which is another one of my designs. And another design that works really, really well for crochet and variegated yarn. I'll put a picture up. Yeah. So yeah, that was Imogen quite a few years ago actually. Oh, how old would she have been? Oh, I think she was probably about five and a half when those photos were taken. Maybe six. Oh, my baby's getting so big. Um, yeah, really versatile uh, design. Well, versatile in that you could do it in a solid colour, but it works equally well for variegated, which I know I've talked about it before. Variegated doesn't always work in crochet in an attractive fashion. That's my opinion. That's I just I don't like it when it looks like camouflage gear or Lego blocks stacked one on top of the other. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's my plan for that yarn, and hopefully I will have it done this winter. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. So that's what I plan on doing. That's about it from me for this episode. I hope you're well. I hope you're enjoying your crafting time. Thanks for joining me this time. If you want to know more about anything I've shown you today, try the links at the uh, under the video on the YouTube info itself or head over to my Ravelry page, look up Mrs. Ramjet and uh, you can find all the information about any yarns I've added to my stash or projects I'm currently working on. Uh, they will all be included there for you to find out the further details on those. So. I add everything, pretty much everything I add to Ravelry, so um, you'll be able to find it all there if you want to know more. 
So take care everybody and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.